Prominent investors Michael Burry and Jeremy Grantham just posted their thoughts on the U.S. stock market for 2023. In the case of Michael Burry, he compared the current stock market to the dot-com implosion, and Jeremy Grantham compared it to a meat grinder. Does this mean potentially that we've seen the bottoms and that ultimately we're looking at a new bull market or that we're looking at potentially new lows ahead? If this is your first time tuning in, you're watching Unrivaled Investing. If you enjoy educational investment videos, please make a point of hitting that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button. So let's understand starting with Michael Burry, what does he have to say? So he just tweeted literally a few hours ago, maybe. And usually with Michael Burry, it's a little bit cryptic. You have to dig in a little further to understand. There's a stock chart. What, what does this even mean? So he posted once again a stock chart from the dot-com implosion, implosion. This is of the S&P 500. And you can see, yes, it had declined significantly by 2001. And then while it fell sharply in the third quarter of 2001, it, it rallied significantly and was actually starting to breach a downward trend line, a 200 day downward trend line. And so Michael Burry circled this saying, hey, this is maybe what we're looking at now. So why is that relevant to 2023? Well, that's actually what you're seeing with the S&P 500. You saw a sharp decline, you know, between around 20, 25 percent in 2022. And then you're starting to see this rally so far in the last month or so. And now you're starting to breach this downward trend line. Could this mean that we're breaking into a new trend where you're looking at potentially a higher trend because we were in a downtrend? Maybe we're now facing an uptrend. Now, you might say, oh, no, Daniel, you're talking about you know, technical analysis versus fundamentals. And, you know, you look at Warren Buffett, he started off with technicals and then he moved to Ben Graham and said, Hey, I'm never going to use technicals again. I'm going to focus on free cash flow. That, I think, Monk, uh, I think when you look at, you know, Warren Buffett over a five, 10 year perspective, ultimately it's the free cash flows that's going to move the, the price of a security or a stock long term is that that free cash flow. But before that five year period, you will see a lot of volatility. And that's where some investors have benefited from looking at technical analysis. This is also part of the reason why I really enjoyed Guy Spears book, The Education of a Value Investor, where he calls out that, look, everyone needs to figure out their own path, their own journey, what's right for them. You are not going to be the next Warren Buffett. The best you can be is the best version of yourself. Michael Burry is clearly finding the best version of himself includes looking at technical analysis, saying, hey, what's the trend line? You know, what does that mean? Considering his his own different investments, you know, when he's considering looking at a new idea. What are my own personal thoughts as I look at this? I personally don't put too much weight on technical analysis. I think it's something that's being, it's it's worth being aware of. If you see something that's in a downtrend or just started to go in downtrend, maybe it's worth asking yourself, am I missing something? Is there potentially a bare thesis that I'm not aware of? And if you see something that's starting to go above it, you know, starting to break into a higher uptrend, does this mean that, you know, you're, you're looking at a compelling valuation? This could potentially be a broader, you know, start of a v potentially long rally. So I, I don't put most of my weight is on the fundamentals. Most of my weight is fo focused on the free cash flow, the growth and thinking about valuation. I pretty much put very little weight on technical analysis. Personally, it's just something I'm aware of. And based on looking at Michael Burry, even though he's very focused on fundamentals, and I personally think that's where he puts most of his weight, he is aware of what's going on with technical analysis. And he, he's even written about it previously with his some of his posts online saying it's one of these things that's frustrating because it maybe it just works because everyone else is aware that there's this 200 day moving average and several prominent traders like Paul Duder. Tudor Jones and Stanley Druckenmiller have called out that they use it as well to sort of guide their own risk on risk off behavior. I call out my own personal portfolio at unrivaledinvesting.com sharing what am I buying and selling, but I also have educational courses dedicated to thinking about valuation as well priced at what I what I think is very affordable prices to not only understand valuation, but also to think about financial statements. In full disclosure, this is not financial advice. So what have we seen so far and what does this mean for the rest of 2023? So looking at, you know, what's gone on so far, you've seen this rally. And I think partly because, as the Wall Street Journal just posted in the last few days, that the Federal Reserve is likely, you know, going to consider pausing in the months ahead because economic conditions have gotten worse. And so you see the Fed, uh, the Wall Street Journal saying, hey, maybe the Fed, instead of raising rates by a half percent, they only raise 
you know, rates by a quarter percent later this month and then potentially pause in one of the next meetings. So this is getting, you know, the animal spirits excited. Personally, I look at the things that are rallying like Carvana, Open Door, Bed Bath & Beyond and AMC, some of the most speculative securities out there. In the case of Carvana, Open Door, you're looking at things that are significantly cash burn, Bed Bath & Beyond up 30% this past month. This is a company that management has dis disclosed that they're on the brink of bankruptcy, that they, you know, that's something that they're actively considering, in which case there's a good chance stockholders get wiped out altogether. You know, these are very speculative securities. This is not what I think you see with a market bottom. This is what you see with a bear market rally, in my opinion, where people are making some sort of speculative bids. The, the speculative fervor of this market cycle, in my opinion, has not gotten wiped out. And you see that with the price action of several of these securities. Now, you also have input on what's actually going on with the economy, looking at the S&P Global Market Intelligence. They're looking at various different indicators, tracking real-time and leading indicators. So, so the chief business economist for S&P Global talking about how the U.S. economy has started 2023 on a disappointingly soft note, business activity contracting sharply again in January, moderating compared to December, but still looking at a rate of decline. They're talking about how this rate of decline is among the steepest seen since the global financial crisis, reflecting falling activity across both manufacturing and services. So I look at this and I'm thinking, wow, this is part of the reason why this is such a well-telegraphed recession that you're looking at in 2023. And everyone seems to know, yeah, things are getting ugly. And this is part of what Jeremy Grantham was just writing, and he just posted about how after timeout, back to the meat grinder, there's a few key takeaways from what he had to say. You know, the main one is that valuations still aren't deeply cheap, and that's really important to consider because valuations do play a role in returns long-term. Really, there's three things that drive returns. You're you're looking at valuation over a any short term period that's going to be one of the key drivers but over a multi year multi decade perspective valuation plays a much smaller role so but valuation is something to be mindful of you also have growth and you also have the cash flows uh, of a business will the cash flows get returned to you as a shareholder so you have fundamental growth you know, the cash flows that potentially get returned to you as a shareholder and valuation. Those are sort of the three key components. And he's saying, yeah, valuations still aren't cheap. And when you look at past recessions, past bear markets, typically you see things swing all the way to, you know, in another extreme. So you might go from really overvalued to dramatically undervalued. And so you, you have this tendency to overcorrect. And that's not what we've really seen so far. You know, the S&P 500 trading at around 19 times earnings, certainly not in the, you know, the cheap territory. Now, he does make an interesting point saying, given that this recession is so well telegraphed that you even have several major investment banks calling out, you know, like, hey, we're expecting a recession and that everyone seems to be aware of it. Is it possible that you know, the bear market potentially gets delayed, you know, because you do see a strong labor market. You do see that inflation likely gets tamed. You do see that China reopen. These are, you know, sort of his thoughts, maybe because everyone knows the bear market gets delayed. You don't get that additional 20, 30, maybe even 40 percent downside that Michael Burry was calling out, you know, with with his you know technical comparison to the dot com implosion. And so he's he's saying, Maybe that's one of the possibilities. My personal takeaway from looking at it, looking at both Jeremy Grantham and Michael Burry is neither of them are saying, hey, this is a super high conviction environment. They're both saying maybe, you know, literally, that's what Michael Burry is saying. Jeremy Grantham, he's saying hmm, maybe, maybe it gets delayed. Either either way, you're probably going to still face more pain ahead. It might, maybe it's not this year, but maybe it's, you know, over a two, three, four, five year perspective. And so I, I personally look at this as an environment where I just want to own things that I have super high conviction in because it's very hard to get a high conviction on the broader macro environment when you see that the Federal Reserve is still raising rates. Even if, even if they only raise one more time, you still have rates going up when you're looking at real economic contraction. And that's typically doesn't happen. So does this mean that we could have, you know, really significant, ugly, painful economic contraction in the quarters ahead that hasn't really been priced in? I think that is a real risk. And so that's part of the reason why when I'm considering my own personal portfolio, I want to find things that I say, okay, this business has a multi-year, hopefully even a multi-decade 
perspective of generating returns. Most recently, I called out to my subscribers at Unrival Investing, you know, a company that has generated thousands of percent returns over time, now trades at 14 times, and I think does still have compelling potential in the years ahead. And it's based on a business with over 80% recurring revenue. So that's, that's the type of thing that I want to find in this environment. I want to find like, if I'm not sure that we're looking at a good times ahead, you know, that, that we're potentially looking at a recession and that's, that's a high probability outcome. I want to find businesses that are very stable. I don't want to own cash burning businesses in size. You know, if I'm going to own something that's cash burning, I want to make sure it's clear path to getting to, to self financing, or I need to make sure that that has a lot of growth attached to it. So I say, okay, well, if there, if the, if you are cash burning, will you still grow even if there's a recession? There's this sort of structural growth that I, I believe will still happen because of that. Now, most companies don't have that. It's very, very tough. But occasionally you do find something and then you buy it, and that's hopefully something you sit on for years, potentially decades, as you're looking at potentially structural growth for a type of company like that. So that's what I think is going on, you know, here. Jeremy Grantham also shared his thoughts on, you know, where does the market, this is his firm GMO, where is the market potentially head in the years ahead, calling out, you know, U.S. stocks and U.S. bonds really generating terrible real returns adjusted for inflation over the next few years, saying he really doesn't expect anything really material, attractive returns at all. Really, it's all international. And personally, as I look at my portfolio, I'm also inclined to say the same where most of my portfolio is geared to looking at international bargains as well as I'm saying, hey, U.S. Is, isn't as compelling as maybe what you can find elsewhere, maybe in Canada or abroad uh, beyond North America. So if this video has been helpful for you, talking about how two prominent investors, Michael Burry, Jeremy Grantham, both making comparisons to the past and saying, hey, you know, in Michael Burry's case, he said, you know, this reminds him of the dot-com implosion and he saw further downside. In the case of Jeremy Grantham, he's saying typically, markets overcorrect. We haven't seen that happen so far. That said, everyone seems to know about it. There's this widespread pessimism. So maybe the bear market gets delayed. Maybe it, you know, it's another six to 12 months before you see another leg down. Who knows how that plays out? Neither of them have that high conviction. And so if no one really has high conviction on how this plays out, I think it's really important that individual investors, as they look at their personal portfolio, say, hey, I want to make sure the positions I own I have high conviction in. And if I don't have that high conviction and I want to hold that personal, you know, that cash balance personally, you know, I keep my my investment accounts at interactive brokers. They currently have something like a 4% yield on their cash balances. So that's what I'm focused. There's a link below for interactive brokers if you're interested. If you enjoyed this video, if this was helpful and educational for you, please make a point of hitting that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for tuning in.